The P. Diddy Freak Off Party explained in full detail. Coming up next on the Infographics Show. Editing done by me. Congratulations, you've been invited to a party hosted by none other than famous rap mogul Puff Daddy. It's going to be an extravagant gala and definitely going to skyrocket your social media following. But when you get there, it's just Diddy and a few of his close friends looking like Plankton in his basement dungeon. And you're being told to take a bottle of lube to a private room to prepare yourself, all while Diddy licks his lips and looks at you, whispering to himself, I was in one bedroom, dreaming of a million. Now I'm in beach houses, creamed to the ceiling. As you're about to find out, one of Puff Daddy's most famous lyrics could have been quite literal. 1,000 bottles of lube, enough to fill a very large aquarium. This was the shocking discovery inside of one of Puff Daddy's homes after a federal search warrant was executed against him. And all of that lube? Well, it was meant to be used by some of your favorite celebrities in what Diddy called freak-off parties. Try to picture a thousand bottles of lubricant. Odds are you're not picturing enough. At 12 fluid ounces each, Diddy's freak-out lube stash would be almost enough to completely fill a 100-gallon fish tank. So why did Diddy need enough lube to create a slip and slide that could stretch across the entire length of a movie theater, from the lobby to the front screen. And we mean that literally. 1,000 12-ounce bottles equals about 93 gallons, which would let you cover a slip and slide six feet wide and around 630 feet long with one millimeter of personal lubricant, or a total surface area of almost 350 meters. At Diddy's movie theater, you could slide in the front door on a cushion of sex lube, whiz by the concession stand for your popcorn and soda, and then slide into your front row seats right by the big screen. And what's playing in Diddy's theater? Well, one of his personal home movies, but more on that soon. First, let's talk about enough lube to drown an elephant seal. Americans buy in bulk, as we know, and there's a Costco right down the street. These are actual statements from P. Diddy's lawyer in response to the discovery of 1,000 bottles of lubricant and baby oil at Diddy's home. While it is true that Americans enjoy bargain shopping from big box stores, most Americans also don't need enough lubricant to fully insert a Minuteman intercontinental ballistic missile into a missile silo that is a little nervous because this is their first time. The public discovery of Diddy's freak-off parties come alongside startling revelations from the numerous criminal cases against him. In 2023, Sean John Combs, a.k.a. P. Diddy, a.k.a. Diddy, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, a.k.a. Lube Daddy, a.k.a. P. Slip and Slide, a.k.a. Federal Defendant No. 1, saw his entire career unwind with allegations that he had abused and exploited former girlfriend Cassandra Ventura, also known as Cassie. He was 37 years old and she was just 19 when they first met, quickly making her financially and career dependent on him. At these freak-off parties, it's alleged that he forced Cassie to perform acts on others against her will. The case would be settled out of court without the terms of the settlement being publicly revealed. However, it's likely that this included a very large financial compensation. There's no word on compensation for Diddy blowing up Kid Cudi's car after he became enraged to discover that Cudi had been dating Cassie. Given how much lube Diddy had on hand, getting his car blown up was the least of Cudi's worries. But Cassie's lawsuit was the tip of the iceberg, because Puff Daddy, a.k.a. Lube Master 3000, was already facing several other cases for exactly the same type of behavior. And front and center of these allegations were P. Baby Oil Diddy's freak-off parties. For both legal reasons and to protect their reputations, it has become incredibly difficult to get solid details on what exactly went on at these freak-off parties from those who attended. But it doesn't take much imagination when there are literally 1,000 bottles of lube and baby oil involved. Odds are, with that much lubricant to make things nice and slippery, Diddy and his guests were not hosting a chess club. Some leaks have emerged, though, painting a sordid picture of Combs' freak-off parties. Allegedly, they involved multi-day-long marathons of physical debauchery, with P. Diddy, a.k.a. Slip Daddy, flying in sex workers specifically for the events. That particular allegation seems to have some basis in reality, as amongst the many charges Diddy seems unable to slip out of are related to sex trafficking across state lines, for which he is being prosecuted under the infamous Man Act. Allegedly, Diddy's flesh fests would begin after his famous white parties, which would attract major celebrities such as Leonardo DiCaprio and Mariah Carey. However, after the A-listers left, Diddy would put on a completely different show for a select group of friends. Michael Kaplan of the New York Post, who broke details on freak-offs, 
reported that Diddy would lure in women whom he was personally managing or had met at various adult clubs, along with sex workers. Using either drugs, money, or power over their career, Diddy forced the women to participate. Afterwards, to ensure their silence, he would use video footage taken at the events as blackmail leverage or simply threaten to ruin their career. But freak-offs had other surprises of their own. According to a well-placed drug dealer who was invited to one of these events, male rappers would engage in acts with each other as well, including some very high-profile and well-known talent whose names have not come to the spotlight yet. However, for any fan of the Boondocks, this type of behavior has long been an open secret amongst the hip-hop community. Heavy security would ensure complete privacy, and only people personally invited by Combs were allowed to enter. Threats of violence, drug addiction, and blackmail were all used to ensure complete secrecy, as well as a healthy amount of payouts for at least some individuals, such as Cassie. Even if guests wanted to leave, the sheer amount of personal lubricant flooding the party space would have made that difficult. There's also been no publicly released footage or any photos from any of these freak-off parties, though low-effort media has been using old clips or photos from legitimate white parties that Diddy hosted in their place as clickbait. Allegations that celebrities like Kevin Hart, Leonardo DiCaprio, or Beyonce attended these parties are unproven and rely entirely on photos and videos of them at known white parties. Combs is, at the time of writing, behind bars at the Metropolitan Detention Center after being labeled a flight risk. As federal raids against his U.S. homes were being carried out back in March, Diddy had taken his private plane to Antigua in the Caribbean. Thinking the situation over, he decided to return and was subsequently denied bail requests. Commenting on the discovery of 1,000 bottles of lubricant in one of his homes, Diddy, through his lawyer, wanted it to be clear that the presence of over 90 gallons of lube in baby oil was not, quote, as nefarious as it seemed. Because who doesn't have a commercial-sized aquarium's worth of personal lubricant for various needs in their home? Sean Slippery Combs is facing some serious jail time for the charges against him, even as the details of freak-off parties remain tightly under wraps by federal prosecutors. At a minimum, Combs faces 15 years in prison, though it's possible he could spend the rest of his life in prison if the federal sex trafficking charges are proven, along with a quarter-million-dollar fine. The real question is, how do federal authorities hope to keep a man behind bars who has spent so much of his life steeped in gallons and gallons of personal lubricant? Now slip into this video, the wealthy elite that own the world, or click this other vid instead.